Um, you have zero subscribers. You're setting up your channel right now. You're trying to get your 1,000, 4,000 hours. How would, how would you grow from the beginning? Yeah, so my method is not the only method, but I'm a, um, I'm a realist. I'm a visionary and a realist. Mm -hmm. I've got big vision, but I also really like practicality. So I like to discern the most practical path to success. And in my opinion, the first thing is to say, what is it you want to happen? Do you want to become a famous entertainer or comedian um, or talking head about just general topics? That's tough. I don't think that's that practical. I wouldn't talk someone out of it, but I think that how do you grow? You be incredibly charismatic. You have incredible points of view or the way you talk about things. Um, You are Justin Bieber and you sing and play guitar on YouTube and you get discovered. Um, It is hard to coach musicians because they say, man, how do I crack the code on YouTube? And I was like, well, I don't know how good your music is because <laughs> yeah. again, you're going to, you're going to be hitting up against the lid. If like that, that's obviously, that is the thing that yeah. is the product is ultimately got to be your music and do people care? And can yeah. you grow an audience? Even all the best tactics in the world can't necessarily help you. So kind of laying that as a foundation, what I recommend people do is take a practical path um, and actually kind of lean more into education. There's really two big niches. There's entertainment or education. If you lean into education, I actually think things get easy because all really you, over entertainment. Oh my gosh! I think so. Uh, and 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 again, what do you want to happen? Do you want to be able to quit your nine to five? I think you go into education. Do you want to be able to get an extra couple grand coming in a, a month? You go into education. Not only that, do you want to build that up over the next one to ten years? It's also more sustainable because no matter how good of a musician you are, you're hot this year, but a lot of one hit wonders out of there, yeah. out there, you know. A consistent career in entertainment is a whole art form in and of itself. Whereas when you just solve a problem, which I would, you, you don't even have to call it education, you call it entrepreneurship. Yeah. Entrepreneurs solve problems for a profit. So That's a bar. who do you serve? Who are you helping? And what problem do you solve for them? So I would pick, I would run, say- run it, run it back, run, run, run it back. Who are you helping? And what problem do you solve? What problem are you solving? You so, said something else. You said it really cool just a second ago. I already forgot. Okay. But you know. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's like, you might say, and typically you're going to help who you were a year ago or who you were five years ago. Mm. So you might say, okay, I'm a mom now. I'm a single mom with five kids. And I'm, I've been figuring this thing out though. I'm flourishing. Life's not easy at all. Yeah. And it's a, it's a struggle for sure. But I've, I've figured out some systems and some things the way I do it, my process. And I know there's, other, there's a lot of other moms out there. So who do you help? Now, it's maybe where it gets really interesting is if you niche down or niche down into age, you know, millennial moms versus, you know, ba- like baby boomers trying to connect with their grandkids, yeah. who very much demographic based can be ways that you can resonate with people. But then what do you solve? Because for baby boomers, you might say, okay, I'm a baby boomer. I I really know how to DJ my retirement and Mm -hmm. save on taxes. I'm going to talk about advice, just hard one advice because I study and I read all day long. So the framework we created, again, you're saying, how do we grow? I wouldn't Mm -hmm. go to the tactics first. I go to strategy first, you know, and the strategy would be answering if you drew three circles and in the first one, you wrote passion. The second one, you wrote proficiency. And in the third one, you wrote profit. It's the intersection of those three circles. Passion, proficiency, and, and profit. Profit. Okay. And so if we break them down, passion would be, okay, so what am I passionate about? Well, I'm passionate about motherhood. I'm passionate about entrepreneurship. I read books all day long about, I'm passionate about marketing. I'm passionate about what's, what, even in education, I think you could tap into um, commentary on culture. I'm passionate about, mm. like there's this, there's this uh, I'm passionate about music. Like, so, mm. So I think about like Anthony Napolitano, like he reviews these huge YouTuber reviewing albums. A lot of people listen to him, but again, he's not creating music. He's, he's, he's passionate about that. What are you also proficient at? Well, if you have a background in music and you understand the nuances of it and you're obsessed with it, your proficiency is t- typically what, what keeps you fascinated. Mm-hmm. What, what could you instantly maybe talk about 50 topics? You could come up with your next 50 video ideas. 
what um, do you like to study? If you walked into a bookstore, what section would you be drawn to? Right. And that, and then, and then what do you have some experience in? And the cool thing, if someone's just starting, oh, I'm not an expert. You don't have to be an expert. You just have to be one step ahead. So mm. if you're passionate about real estate and maybe creating autonomy because agents don't necessarily have a cap on their income and you've been studying it, but you're also only one year in, well, then you're 12 months ahead of people that are just getting started. You probably sure. learned a lot in that first year. Sure. So, so you're passionate about it. There's some proficiency there. And I think there's, and to your point, it's like people, if you just have some sort of curiosity, you're probably going to study more than the people that's been in for the last 15 years. Like, oh, this is happening. I'm curious about it. I'm brand new, but hey, guys, this is what I learned. This is what I researched. Tell me what you think. Coming from a curiosity standpoint. Curiosity is essential because if you're not curious, you'll burn out. Absolutely. Yeah. And and so I think about like, it's getting a lot of hate right now, but Amazon released this Lord of the Rings show, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't like it. My wife's into it. It's all right, but we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're enjoying it. But one of the things that I realized, I do this after every movie, every show, I pretty much always go to YouTube and I say ending explained. I'll go, you know. Really? So, and especially we watched like Lord of the Rings episode one on Amazon prime. I was like, I don't know what the heck is happening in here. Like, (laughs) and so I went to YouTube after it's done, you know, this is like, it's almost like bonus features on a DVD or a Blu-ray, you know? And I watched a 30 minute video. I watched every second and my God, like the level of detail. (laughs) So some guy is breaking down, he's got clips and pictures from the books and he's talking about history and he's framing things up. It's enriching the show. To, by mm-hmm. the way, a lot of times I, w- I sometimes didn't even like a movie. And once I actually watch and they're like, look at these angles, look at this storyline, look at this motif that mm. was in the movie. I'm like, well, I didn't <laughs> see that at all. But I mean, I, and so so that's what's oh, exciting that's heavy. about that is is I honestly, I, I do like movies and media, but personally, that would not keep me. I'd be too bored if I had to watch movies and media all day long. Flick Connection. This dude's making a full-time living, getting sponsored by Athletic Greens. My wife and I just yesterday watched the best new movies coming to, oh, uh, you know, Netflix in October. And we watched the whole thing. So watch time. And, and he's using... I'm only texting because I have a, I, a really, really good idea and I cannot forget it because you just sparked something amazing. Uh, okay, I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys. But I'm still going to write it down. Actually, Joe just texted to me. So, okay. So... It's like I do these interviews, right? An hour, hour and a half, right? I just need to create another channel and maybe even hire somebody to do the reviews of the podcast episodes that's like an hour and they do like a 15-minute review of all these episodes. But not only just mine, but all of these interviews of entrepreneurs who are into that thing that don't want to watch the two hours. They just take it, clip it up. That's going to be another channel. Well, and, and, and that's what's, what's exciting about that. Again, that. It doesn't just have to be when you go passion, proficiency, and then profit. It, it is, again, what keeps you super curious. Mm-hmm. Like if you absolutely love learning and digesting entrepreneurship. And, and we live in a world where you can make a good living as a content DJ, mm-hmm. as one who curates. Uh, you know, my friend Evan Carmichael, his entire channel is like Oprah's 50 rules to success. Gary Vee's 10 rules to success. Um, and their compilations, fair use, it is clips, other people, OPC. What's fair use? Uh, fair use law is, means that you can do this legally, um, because you're combining multiple different sources into an original work. OPC, not OPP, naughty by nature, (laughs) OPC, other people's content. Right. Um, and you can use other people's content legally if you're on camera, you're the DJ. And so Flick Connection He's playing all kinds of clips. Like he's not, he doesn't have light kits and gaff. He's not making all this stuff, but he's just talking in a room. But the video is very interesting because he's showing you the trailers and the clips. And I'm watching the Lord of the Rings summary and it's a rich media experience. This guy didn't create the media, but he DJed it. And he, and, and he obviously is obsessed enough. I don't want to go read 10,000 pages of J.R. Tolkien, all the niche books and research the things and figure it yeah. out. He did that. So if you are passionate and it keeps you curious, you can monetize that passion. And then profit would be, how am I going to make money at this? Mm -hmm. So how do I grow? That goes back to, you know, if you pick the right thing that's based on your passion and you do have some proficiency at it, 
then you also pick the right business model. Now, maybe the ambition isn't a particular amount of money, but if it is, and you want all three of the P's, then you would choose the vehicle. You might say, man, I can't decide between these three passions. Well, then you ask, which one are you strongest at? And then you ask, which one will get you to your financial goals?